me know when you mash it so that way it's like i know but you know just whenever <laughs> we're there baby we're there right now uh, all right i think we're close i'm a, i might be a little louder than you but you know what fuck it uh we'll but just keep going the way you were so but that that xbox series like the name the name itself calling it the series x confused the fuck out of me because i was i was at work and i was i was in a hurry i was behind and then drew sent me a picture from the award show from the, the tweet from xbox showing me the, the the damn thing and it said series x i'm like what the fuck is that and even though i knew the console was coming i thought that that was like a dang steam machine i thought it was a custom pc that microsoft was making because it was tall and goofy looking but uh no no <laughs> it's the freaking new console they're like boom throw it out right now but I, I was kind of the same way with the Xbox series. I thought, like you are saying, it was the same, like, is it just like, oh, uh, just another Xbox One? You know, or is it like, is it back to the all digital? And I saw the picture, and I was like, oh, it's basically a Steam box, but not really a Steam box, but kind of, sort of. But I guess for them, that's what they do now. I mean, it's like a PC. Yeah, I, I like the look of it, actually. Um I know, I know a lot of people are bitching about it standing up. You can lay it down, but it's going to have one fan coming out of that convex top, and I think you're going to need to aim that damn thing somewhere. Just It's like, you know, back in the day when you put a dang uh, computer into a little little Cubby box hole. or whatever, a closet or a drawer to hose it. It's like, oh, look at these things. They would sell you dang huge computer stands where you box your computer up so it can melt. It's like, nope, nope. My friend Drew says he's going to... Um, he has his Xbox X setting up to the side. It's not in this entertainment center, and it's the same thing you need to do here. But uh, I don't see why people were bitching about that so much when everybody has a Switch, and you literally have to pick up your Switch and put it down onto that thing. So it's not like that's in the cubby hole either. Yeah, um, it's kind of like, uh, you know, I got like a little entertainment stand with things, and it's like, and you almost feel like you shouldn't put things in there anymore. Like, I remember my 360 would get so hot just sitting in there, and it'd be like, yeah, this is probably not healthy. Um, yeah. I and I'm sure this is going to be the same way. You just stick it out somewhere. Like you said, with the fan being in the top, it's going to be better than it blowing out the side, I'm sure. Um, looks like it's got, like, you know, a trayless disc tray, so you shouldn't have to worry about a scratching disc, you know, even if you're really using it as much anymore. I know that Drew and Jason really love their disc. I've largely don't care because of the game share thing i don't like on xbox how you can only share it with one person i decided to share with jason um so you know our digital libraries are combined and you know on steam it's the same way although it's a little bit more pain than that oh no it sucks on both of them to set it up but it's like or, or you know you can always let somebody borrow the disc or literally just pull up their whole catalog under your shit and just click what you want you know um as far as the controller's concerned, I was hyped to get I, whatever it was. I was hyped to get it because I was like, all right, it's a new Xbox controller. But now actually seeing it, it's just largely the same. I'm like, yeah, I don't give a fuck. Um, I don't care about the share button. And it looks like I might as well just stay with Elite. I told Drew, you know, might as well just get you an Elite now since, you know, this new controller ain't going to be too hot. Uh, do, you think the there's a, do you think there's a chance they make it where it doesn't work on the... Uh... The Xbox One controller doesn't work on this one? No, they both verified that oh, not they? only is okay. it forwards compatible, but the new controller will work with the Xbox One. That's a big thing they're pushing. Oh, and that's so good. Yeah, remember that thing, uh, joystick we modded? Yeah, I mean, so it'll um, still, still work. Oh, yeah, it works no problem, dude. No, I was just saying uh, it'll still work when this comes out, too. Yeah, dude. yeah, it'll it'll call through. Uh, I was just wondering, you know how, like, Sony, you know, it's like they didn't they didn't want you using PS3 controllers on a PS4, even though it, they're, you know, minus that big share button in the front, virtually the same controller, you know. So I was just wondering if they'd be like, oh, no, you get a new one. But I like I, I like the one controller. That's probably my favorite controller of all time. It's probably an Xbox One controller. I think it has the best feel to it. So the fact that they didn't change it is like great. You know, I, I didn't need them to like reshape it and make it you know, 10% smaller, bigger, whatever, you know, just to ergonomically change it. I, I didn't feel a need for that. Yeah. They they said they changed it the way it was. A, there's a GameSpot article that goes along with it. Phil usually, once he does a big reveal, he'll do an exclusive with somebody. So he talked to GameSpot, and he says it's like, there's like 95% uh, of people can hold the Xbox One controller 
But now on the Xbox wireless one, that's what they call a new one. It's 98%. I'm like, so it's like my, so it's like three millimeters smaller. Is that what you're saying, man? Yeah. It's just <laughs> slight. It's like, who was that? Who was that other 3%? You know, it's like, <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know how you would rationalize that, man. It's like, oh, man, if we just shave off like a millimeter right here, it'll be better. You know, just. It's the like, damn like, whatever. agents with their tiny hands. Maybe it was just like we had to put a share button on it because we knew 3% of the market was our, not ours because it didn't have a share button on it. Maybe that's what it was. Yeah, when you hit share button on like PlayStation, um, some companies like uh, Koei, you know, the Dynasty Wars people. Yeah. They have, a lot, they have a lot more control over you when you do it through, through PlayStation and they'll just mute your entire video, man. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, it's like, so it's like, um, fuck that. I, I guess it's still good for streaming and stuff. I don't know if the hit streaming is good, but, you know, they'll just mute the hell out of it. And um, never mind, I, I don't know how much they've done as far as increasing, but the amount of space it takes to make a video or something like that is, like, astronomical. And you could just fill up a dang four terabyte, with, you know, not too much work. But um, that's where a lot of people, you know... It, should, it would be really easy because we just spent later on an hour trying to get this shit ready. You know, if it's uh, exactly. just one button and you just talk into that headset you already have, I can understand a, a whole lot of people just being able to do it a whole lot easier. Do you think they'll keep the infrared thing on the, on the controller? Because I never radio? found a use for that. Or whatever it was, you know, like the radio thing on the controllers. Like, I never found a use for it. I didn't know what it was actually for you know i knew it was in there because we took that one apart but i don't remember what else like what it actually did i mean did anything I, use it they say that it's you still using um a radio signal that the original xbox one controller used so the one we took apart and uh, they worked something on the latency the latency although i can't tell the difference between the latency on like a, like a wireless controller but i can tell there's a there's a more of an input delay in general on playstation 4 than there is on Xbox One. Um, and especially when you look at like PlayStation 3 emulation compared to like Xbox One emulating 360, it's like a huge difference. So yeah, I'm thinking I that, so. that radio thing helps there. I, I, they've added more Blu-ray stuff. Um, I don't know when exactly they did it. I know the Elite Series 2 has Blu-ray in it, and I'm assuming more controllers do as well. You mean Bluetooth? Yeah, Bluetooth. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, they were... They started off the generation fairly picky, though. Like, you still can't just sit there and just buy any old USB headset and plug it into your Xbox One. Because I gave Drew one, and it just did not work. It didn't want to work. Yeah, it just was a piece of shit. Um, but I like how, you know, it's more like, you know, add stuff, take away stuff, and we're going to bring up for it. All the games are going to come with it. And that helps negate the whole... You know, here's the thing that's going to make your shit obsolete, you know, attitude. But um, I'm still not happy with the Xbox X and, like, you know, the PS4 Pro. And, um, dude, I was, Slight I've already, upgrades. yeah, yeah, I, I made a video bitching for 20 minutes. So I've got it set to go on in the beginning of next year. And then, oh, boom, Xbox Series X. I'm like, oh, God, I was calling it the Xbox Next Box XXL. They, which now is really better, be late, they, man. They knew they they knew they had seen what all you'd done. They had you <laughs> know they put their peepers out, and they were like, "We got to change the name of this right now." <laughs> <laughs> you just call it the Xbox Turbo or the 720. That'd be a better name than the Series X. Series X sells. Yeah, it just it really threw me off because it's like I mean I guess because you can use the controllers and it's like you know and I I mean does that mean it's gonna be fully backwards compatible at this point? Yeah, yeah. It's I mean you it know. Be. So I guess I guess it's just like you know, it's, what are they going to do next though? Is it going to be like Series X, something you know, like when they come out with the, you know, they'll come out with a Slim or a Pro or whatever. I mean, at some point, this thing is like it might even be the size of like a Wii at some point. Um, if you look at the um, Xbox One, right? You had the the 2013 one. Yep. And you had the Elite, which was I think was just more stuff added. It didn't even have an Elite controller in it. And then you had the S and the x um so if you're calling it the series maybe this is a blank name and the actual name of individual consoles will be better like when they you've heard rumors for years that there was going to be two SKUs. one was called lockhart which was going to be like a 1080p unit 
It was it was designed to play 1080p, so it was like spec lower. I think it was even spec lower than the Xbox X, and it was going to have no hard drive. It's going to be as cheap as they could be. So it's like, okay, if you release this thing, and it's day one, three hundred dollars, like the price of the Switch, you can undercut PS5 that way. You could go, you can go cheapo, and then they have the other SKU was called the Anaconda, and that one was supposed to be. Bigger than the PlayStation 5. This is the most powerfulest console with the biggest stick. All of that kind of thing. And probably $600 is what I would be thinking. Yeah. Um, and then that's what I heard for like a couple of years. And then I think around June or something, there was a big rumor that, oh, well, there's only going to be one SKU. But then they call this thing the Series X, which is making me think they've, they've already got planned in. Now, um, whether that cheaper model comes out day in, you know, that the uh, Anaconda thing comes out, I don't know. It's definitely going to come. And then, you know, then after that, we're going to do the Super Turbo Buzzer. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like, with uh, it's like, uh, I'm almost surprised that they even put a disk drive on it because I was almost expecting the next one to be like no disk after they've already come out with the digital one, which I thought was kind of it's a pricey console for what it was. It was only like, what, $50 less than a regular Dude, one? The, the Xbox, uh, was S all digital the sad edition? It was, yeah, exactly. It was way it was, too expensive. It, it was like what two fifty, and it's like, dude, you should have put that on the market at like one hundred and fifty bucks, one hundred and thirty dollars. You know, just put budget it out there, just throw it out there, and people would jump on it just because yeah. it's so cheap. People, it wouldn't even buy one normally. It'd be like, oh, I'll pick it up because it's like you know less than one hundred and fifty bucks. But for it to be thirty dollars, I mean fifty dollars cheaper than a standard one, and then if you look on Black Friday, you can always find one for 199 somewhere like the s i know they did them last uh, black friday they did them the year before black friday so it's kind of like it's already 200 bucks if you get it on sale you know it just i didn't get that i thought it'd be way cheaper yeah they they kind of bungled the price up um but they had to put the disc in it so that you could take your original ninja goddamn black from the original xbox throw it in there the, uh, the freaking Master Series Refrigerator X will recognize that it's an original Xbox game, and it'll download that game, and then you can play it. That's why they'd have to put it in there. And there's just so many people that would just scoff. They would be, oh, they'd lose their mind, I'm sure. Yeah, they would lose yeah. their mind if you had to go digital. Um, and I get the fact that, like, not everybody has the greatest internet. Like, you know, especially overseas. Like, you know, people that are deployed overseas. Like, I get that, or, you know, up in certain more rural areas but rootville fucking rootville. yeah i mean you know i get it it's just kind of one of those like i i'm just waiting for them to you know just throw a console out there and be like yeah it's all digital that's what you get you know yeah i mean god half the pcs these days don't even have a cd-rom drive you know it's just is what it is the cases or, don't even have a slot for it you know or another way you could go is like the way switches you know those um the cartridge those 30 those 32 gigabyte little quick flash thumb drives are not expensive and so not like would... cartridges were back yeah. in the day yeah. i mean you know it's just way cheaper now and it's i mean that's all it is it's just a proprietary version of a you know a flash cart yeah. um so i could see something going with that especially i mean all these games have to install so it's like even when you first get it it's like you got to you know, spend 30 minutes letting it do its, you know, install at that point. And then, you know, that's not fun. And then you get to get the, um, you know, the, the day one patch, <laughs> the 50 yeah. gigabyte patch, <laughs> the 40 <laughs> gigabyte the patch is the size of the game. And it's like, it, sometimes you wonder if they did the old Capcom thing where it's like, oh, the, the stuff's on the disc. You just needed the five kilobyte thing to unlock it. You know, or it's like, it's not even on the disc. This is just five kilobytes on the disc to tell the <laughs> download code, you know, or whatever. <laughs> That's the way the a physical copy of Bloodstain was. I'm like, what the fuck is even I'm doing this? I gave a copy of the true. I'm like, here you go. Take it. I'm just going to play on PC. And I'm like, there's only eight megabytes on this thing. So, <laughs> uh, Yeah. I'm not surprised. I, I I ended up doing it on PC. I actually ended up picking it up on Switch, which I heard was not really a good rendition of it, and it just got patched, so I haven't tried it. But I just wanted a like a more per portable version to play. But yeah, I, I'll have to I, tell Russell about that. Yeah, Switch has always got. But um, you know, had I not a PC, I'd be hyped for this. I just I can't get hyped. Um, I know that it's going to be bringing in a new era of big games, and so 
and that is exciting. And, and I'll have to upgrade my damn shit, you know, because I gotta have bigger than Xbox. I can't have a little. I can't have a little PC, man. We got the biggest shit. But um, it's like everything that you're going to get on Xbox is at least first party. It's going to be guaranteed on PC anyway. And I've got that Game Pass thing to like 2022. You did yep. get that right. Uh, I didn't get the full thing. I ended oh, up getting one for like it was like I think I've got it for like a year or something at this okay. point. But um, it, apparently what they've been doing though is if you watch it when you get it on sale half time, you can get three months for like fourteen dollars. Yeah. So it's kind of like that's still dirt cheap for what you're getting it for. I mean, because you get the gold with it and everything, so it's kind of like I have a feeling that's going to be kind of their, you know, and I'm sure they're going to add more games to it every time. So. That's what the, they don't even want to, you know, sell you the disc. They just want to sell you the service. And right now, they're so worried about competition or whatever, or trying to build their build up subscriptions. They're just throwing that shit at you. So it's like just to reiterate to other people. Um, during E3, uh, there was that upgrade your thing or ultimate for one dollar. So upgrade whatever hell you had. So if you had three months of um, Xbox Live and three months of regular Game Pass, they gave you like six months of. Um, Xbox Ultimate, which has the two game passes for PC and Xbox and, and Xbox Live. And then so what you wanted to do was just you'd buy a whole three years worth of Xbox Live and then just press the dollar to upgrade it. So it ended up being like a just so I'm like 2022 and I've got everything and I don't have to have to pay anything till then. I know I know what's gonna happen is like by the time that 2022 gets around, I'm like feel like I'm gonna need to have it every month. And then then you start paying Phil fifteen dollars. That's the whole plan. Yeah. It's gonna make you I, I'm surprised they let it go for that three year thing. Seems like they would have went for like a one year and then but you know, or even two years, but at three years you're like, Oh, definitely why not? You know, you'd jump on it. I'm sure that's to help the uh, hardcore people that probably have paid a couple years through Xbox uh, or Gold or in, and in Game Pass as well. Just give you that three max to max it out. Um, hey, man, I'll pay that kind of price. So it was like, well, $181 for being Game Pass for three years and live. Oh, yeah. And I wouldn't even subbed up to live much at the time. So we just, we get everything. Well, that's uh, how I was. I, I used to always have my live, you know, going and then it was like after a while it kind of been like uh you know i don't have anybody i really play anything with at the moment or you know i'm just not playing online like i used to but at that point it was like eh, yeah you might as well just go ahead and get it yeah it's just um didn't have as many games on xbox one that i wanted to play with you guys and so uh there was a whole lot more big multiplayer things with like you know a whole bunch of people and i always like the closed group um, even if it's versus, I would like to get a closed group against each other. And, you know, um, there are some things, which would be a nice segue, some things like Resident Evil Revelations 2 that we were so hyped for. And I literally bought a second Xbox One for that uh, game. And it just did not fail to live up to expectations. So let me switch my screens over here to Resident Evil. And... Um, I think what we'll try to do to kind of condense it is like, let's just talk about the Resident Evil's this generation. Is that okay? Yeah. I, I think um, because there's so many of them. And um, so we'll talk about like Revelations 2, um, Resident Evil 7, which I played and you haven't, and then like 2, which you have played, and I've not played more than a couple hours of. Um, and I think that'll be pretty good. We're sitting about 18 minutes right now, by the way. Um, See, I was so hyped for Revelations 2. Um, tell us about the Switch one that you've been playing. What was it? You played Revelations 1, right? Yeah, it's it basically it comes with... it's Well, you get one on the cartridge, and then you get a download code for two. Um, and I haven't even messed with two because I already played it and beat it and went all the way through raid mode. It was actually one of the reasons I bought an Xbox One originally because I was like, oh, man, I like the first one, but I didn't go through the raid mode. So I've been playing raid mode on the switch just because i could really i got a switch basically for Link's awakening and yeah. i liked it it was great played it beat it and it was like one of those like well now i want to play something else but i really wasn't i didn't have there wasn't anything on it that i like i wasn't going to sit down and spend 70 hours on zelda I, I haven't really played the last like zelda or two i used to be hardcore into them and then it was like yeah you know, it's just at the time it wasn't appealing to me so i was like i'll i'll go back and do resident evil and um i mean it it, it feels just like it did on 360 i mean you know basically it's the same game 
but um i like the raid mode um of course there's like no online community for it at all i don't think at this yeah, point i mean <laughs> just play it by yourself dude <laughs> exactly. I ended up playing the vast, yeah i played the vast majority of revelations one because it was so grindy man it was so grindy and so you just kept doing it yourself um but i think the difference between revelations one and two i liked how you get all those people in two they kind of felt like they were just the same character just a- addressing on top of them you get what i'm saying i don't even think any of them had any weapon differences did they it's been so long since i played two but i'm trying to remember if like you know in one it was like you know certain outfits even of the same character had different loadouts as not yeah. weapons but like their abilities um and I'm trying to remember, because I haven't played, t- it's been a couple of years since I played 2, but I, lo- I went all the way through that raid mode, and it was, you know, kind of rushed, you could tell. I mean, it didn't even have multiplayer until, like, after I'd already maxed out, like, one of the characters on it. It was just, um, but all I the characters it. had the same, they, they didn't have individual levels, did they? No, it, they did, I think. Yes, they no, had they individual did. levels. Um they they uh you had to like, do each one individually as opposed to revelations one where like as soon as you unlock somebody like they weren't le- they weren't level one they were they could be whatever level your account was yeah uh, it was um they gained levels but they wasn't they had a couple of different animations but that was largely it and so you didn't have like that like plus bonus to 30 percent shotgun it's like oh well, jill's a jill's a, a pistol guy character and then chris is a shotgun guy they didn't have that, and um, I just felt like it was a mannequin over, a, you know, a default kind of mannequin, and you said a skin of what the character was, and then um, and the, I just didn't care for that. But to go back to where about you about the multiplayer, just to re- refresh other people, when they released Revelations two, um, we were hyped as hell for it, ready to get it, and they released it in like little episode bits, and like you had to wait a week between each bit, and then you had to play through the single player which you couldn't even play online with another person. You could play split screen with uh, another person, but you can play online with them. And then, like, after they were done with that, the, the PS4 version had some had needed a performance patch. It was running like shit. And then the, the Xbox version, you couldn't even play online with people yet because they had borked it up or some shit. And so I ended up playing, like, split screen and stuff with Eddie a lot. Um, had to, And then by the time we're done and it's time... Fight fixed, we're ready. He really didn't want to play the game no more. Well, oh, that's pretty much how it was. Because I remember uh, me and Will played it, and uh, I remember me and you were like, by the time me and you finished that raid stuff, it was like it finally got where online was on there. But it, it took so long that it was, you know, it's kind of I was like, I have a feeling Bloodstain's going to be kind of like that because they kept saying like, oh, it's going to have, you know, co-op later on to be added, and it's like. The game's been out for like uh, it's not quite a year, but it's been out for a minute. So it makes me wonder. It's like by the time it do, if they do add it, it'll be like nobody will really be playing it anymore. Or a, um, or a hack job where they just it'll have to be asynchronous, which is what Castlevania HD is. But Castlevania HD was built from the ground up to uh, be playable, and so they make it asynchronous, so it's not quite synced up to what the other person's doing. Um, but then if you're hacking it up, you're going to end up with something like Dynasty Warriors where literally, like, I just killed Lu Boo. No, I killed Lu Boo, and I killed him five exactly. minutes ago. It's like you're both in some sort of game. You're not really interacting, though. You can see the other guy. It's just worked up stupid. It's like a yeah. half-ass multiplayer. And um, I bet you that's what's probably going to happen, dude, because, you know, they started single. Um, they made all of those, what was it, uh, little reward tears or whatever and now they have to go back and do them and it seems to be taking forever oh well, yeah i thought they would already have the uh the uh, the other playable character out by now even uh what's his name i was like i figured you know that would be out within a couple of months after they did it and i mean i'm sure it takes a long time but it just kind of was like yeah it's been a minute i mean it, of course like i said the switch version i think just got a patch recently that supposedly makes it playable people were talking about the latency being real bad and just, you know, it I I don't know how much because I haven't even tried it since they did the patch, but supposedly it makes it a lot better. You didn't have any problem with like the Revelations 2, did you? I mean Revelations 1. No. It plays just like I hadn't had any type of issues with it at all. I mean, it literally feels like a port of the 360, which was a port of, you know, the 3D 
S one O. You forget how weird that map is when you go back and play it. That um, uh, because it's like designed for a three DS map, and then you go to look at it, and you're like, it's kind of hard to tell where you're, like, what corridors overlap when they're trying to do it in three dimensions. Yeah. But uh, other than that, it's great. Um, one of the things that I really liked about that, and this the slightly missing from, Revela- from Revelations Raid Mode Two, was the ghost ship, which unlocked the entire like pretty much single player level. And then as you played further and along, you, the monsters leveled higher and higher and higher, and it ended up being like this. I mean, a, it really would be like a raid in Destiny, this hard ass thing to do. And it, I, I would still say that that's the hardest thing to do in a Resident Evil game, besides you know bumping up the difficulty to like stupid levels. Um, oh yeah, did Resident you ever beat Go- Five S mode? <laughs> yeah, did you ever beat like? Um, did you beat Ghost Ship? No, I can't remember I- if I did it with you. No, because I never played Raid with you guys until uh, about the time the second one was coming out. So then it was like, oh, I'll just go to the second one. I thought me and you played some Revelations one. We did, briefly. Like, I think yeah. my highest level, I only got up to like level 12 or 13. I did not oh. get very high when we played. It was kind of like, you know. Yeah, you weren't there for when it turned full on Korean RPG. Me and Eddie, we did it. I had to carry Eddie. Um, you had to get, pretty much, there was like one guy, there was like some. Uh, it was the black guy with his swords or some shit, and you I ended up having to just melee the last boss and just had to sit in front of his face. And like there was a little parry thing. I don't know if you remember. You press forward. Yeah. Um, you just sit there and to parry him and do that shit. But um, you know, you would eventually have to if you kept playing Ghost Ship over and over again, you'd eventually get guns good enough to uh, give other people. But the, they really, really damn teared it hard. And, and um, I was expecting that, especially with all that little like crystals to buy extra men and shit. And uh, Revelation Two, like you got to play your daily bullshit and buy microtransactions, but no, they they turned around and made it pretty damn easy, man. Oh yeah. Um, and it felt like I was just doing the same shit with the same character in, in the same worlds. Uh, although I did like that they brought in all the Resident Evil Six areas and stuff. It's yeah, just, that was fun. Um, you know, because they it was just there was little, they, you could tell they brought in a little bit more of like you know than just what was in that game. Um. Which I thought they did good in Revelations because, like, even though it was all on a ship, well, most all of it, minus the outside areas, you know, a couple of places, there was a lot of different areas. Like, the casino was on the ship or, you know, but also you could have, like, the rundown areas of the ship. It was it was neat how they kind of crammed all that into one world. Um, you know, I guess, like, old school Resident Evil, you put you in a mansion. It's got all this crazy stuff going on at the same time. And as, like, fans, okay, so it didn't have a big budget, and it was a portable game. I, I had no problem with that, you know. It was more Resident Evil, and um, I'm kind of missing that in these new games, like 7. And, um, well, I guess they were going to bring some kind of dang uh, Project Resistance thing to 3, but, you know, 7 and 2 had no multiplayer at all, and I'd gotten used to it. And I know that it would be blasphemy to say that I have high praise for Resident Evil 5 and 6, but, but when you play with a person... The game. Oh, it was, a whole lot it was great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like I rem- I loved five when I was playing with somebody. Like me and you went through all that entire thing on like pro mode, and that was insanely hard. But it was fun because yeah. it was me and you doing it. It's like I wouldn't have cared if it'd been single player. I'd been like, I'm not gonna sit here and go through you know Wesker's seven minute speech, you know, fifty million times. But uh, <laughs> it was fun doing it with a friend because it was just some you know it was like oh man it's like you know it's craziness. Um, and Did six was the same way. That? I mean, yeah, six was like, you know, it for all its faults, it was still fun. I mean, you know, it just, you know, at that point it'd become an action series, but still it was, it was entertaining. Did you mention how good they would be to do like the original game with like Chris and Jill through the mansion? It'd be fucking awesome. I guess they kind of oh, did fun. that. Yeah, they, they did. Kinda that. Did. What was that? What was it, the downloadable content for five or something like that? Yeah, they kind of mimicked it. And I think there was a shooty game on the Wii with the uh, the zapper. I mean, the Wii zapper that you know, could get, did the same thing, but it was completely different. But, um, I tried playing those uh, back in the day, and I I couldn't get into them because they were basically shooters like that. And it, but it was like they would expand it on the storyline. Like it'd be like, you know, uh, Leon and Claire having a stage on Resident Evil 2, but it'd be like in shooter form. But it was kind of like uh, it was like, oh, this is what it could have been like, you know, type deal. Just like a little side mission, like there was one that was like him and what's his name from Resident Evil Four? I forget. Uh, was it Crowser? Yeah, Crowser? 
that was him. Uh, you know, kind of like when they were, you know, younger or something. Uh, it was neat, but it was just like, you know, kind of it. Not all those side Resident Evil games were always great. Kind of like uh, was Operation Raccoon City. I, I remember buying that for full price and playing it and just being like, "This is garbage." I mean, it's just absolute trash. It was just horrible. Oh, uh, I mean, it's like, tried. It was just like I was like, "Oh man, you know, it's another Resident Evil." It's like. It's like I should have. I think like right after I bought it, like the next week, it was like twenty nine ninety nine everywhere. Like, oh yeah, this is just you know, this is Doctor <laughs> Stay. That <laughs> he just it was the WWE two K twenty. I mean, it's like you know, it comes out two weeks later. It's like the bargain bid. You know, I, I think it's sold like three million copies. <laughs> it's like it don't take long for everybody to you know figure. And you know, honestly, with the Resident Evil three um, remake, and they're adding the uh, Witcher Digger to it. Um, the, oh God, I forgot. Project the name. Resistance, I think. It's yes, called. it's like when they showed parts for it, like what was it, like a month or two ago. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing. I was like, is this going to be another Operation Raccoon City, except Left for Dead style? But then when I saw they're adding it to this, I'm like. Oh great, that's something to add on to it. Because Resident Evil, it could suck, and it's still the game would be good. <laughs> exactly, it's like you're not you're not missing anything. And Resident Evil Two was fun; it was great. The remake was awesome, but it didn't have a whole lot of like it had replay uh, You know, it is replayable because you could do the scenarios and things would be a little bit different. Just like in the original Resident Evil Two, it'd be like, oh, you know, you do this, and you know, it's different when you're playing as Claire or whatever. Uh, but as far as like, there was no raid mode. There was no like multiplayer. It had a couple of downloadable contents, but they were nothing that was like nothing that you were going to sit there and play over and over and over again. I mean, I guess you could, but not to that extent. So yeah. it kind of, and I know a lot of people were kind of like, what's well, a remake? It's like, should it be 50, 60 bucks? But I mean, it was a full on remake and you, you could get like 15 hours of gameplay out of it. It's not like, you know, it, every game needs to be 40 hours long i guess um but that when i saw that they were adding that i was like oh that's kind of neat because like i would play that i would probably not go out and spend 60 dollars on just that game you know so the fact that it's being thrown in with three is kind of neat um there was another one and i cannot even remember the name all, all i remember is that it came out this generation and um, it was like a, a like a squad based like five on five or some shit with zombies and it, it was in the sewers and I remember it had the pickaxe from Tomb Raider and I can't even remember what it was it was so bad Capcom knew it was shit they didn't even advertise whatever that came out it was just forgotten I can't even remember the name I crap. vaguely remember that I mean because it was like one of those like for a minute it was like oh is this Resident Evil and then it was like it just kind of disappeared um it, it's one of those like I guess they were like they just I guess they're capitalizing on the name, but of all the ones, I mean, very few of those little side ones like that that they've done have ever been good, like Outbreak. Um, what Was Outbreak the one where it had many, a lot of, you could have a lot of people in, like, multiplayer? It, it was four-player, I believe. That's but what it pick, was. You could pick, like, seven or eight characters. Um, I don't think a game, I tried to play that a little bit by myself, and it just, I didn't, was not impressed. Eddie's been through most of those games. By himself. Um, I was thinking, and I'd heard rumors that they were going to remaster those. I would have definitely played those with you. Um, I thought that would have been really good, but um, we'll see whatever this hell Project Resistance is. Uh, I heard it's like, you know, one guy sitting behind the computer or whatever, and he's summoning zombies. He's almost like a dungeon master. And then the four players try to get through his shit. And then he could be a tyrant later on. Um so it's not completely like that Uber Stank shit where I'm from six. Where you, I don't know if you remember where you could be the big dumb monster and you got to yeah, catch the players. Yeah, it, yeah. it just that was forgettable as hell. Um, yep. But uh, so, would you think the Resident Evil Two is like your game of the year? Because it almost won it. It almost won it last night. Um, trying to think if I because I was thinking about that. It's like, is there anything I would place over that? And I would. For me, probably, uh, because um, I didn't... Um, I liked Link's Awakening, and it was great. I thought that was a great remake. Um, but I I enjoyed Resident Evil 2 remake more. Um, yeah. And it was different than 2. They It wasn't like, you know, oh, it's like, you know, exactly the same. It's a little bit different. And they're really... I mean, you know, and I, that's... 
I'm, I'm surprised they're doing three so fast, but I'm sure they saw the money when they were like, oh, we put this out and it's already halfway made because we've already made two and all we got to do is change a few things around. It's like, so I'm sure they just kind of, you know. What I think happened, it's, it's been verified. I can't remember the name. A, a second team worked on it. And so you had your main team already had the engine from seven, you know, and then it probably got halfway done with two and then they brought this other guys in to you know, the, it, where the shit's all ready to go, and so they just had to build upon it. Um, I like the way Jill looks in the game. I don't. I thought something. I thought it was. It, I thought it was interesting. Like I didn't. I didn't not like it. I'm just. I've been playing Re- Revelation so much. So I'm like, oh, she looks totally different. Like in the face. But I was like, eh, it's not the first time they changed the way her face looked anyway. Yeah, I um, like the uh, the way she looks in the re- remake and five the best. Yeah. Um. But I, I like the look of her. Um, and, of course, I'm sure they'll do, like, you know, I think I've already seen that they'll have, like, pre-order now and get classic costumes. you got to have her in, like, the mini skirt with a sweater or whatever it was. Jason, um, if you're listening, remember, pre-order now and then team share the game with me so I could play with a costume. Jason, gotcha. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I, I like the way she looked. Like I said, the, half the game was probably already there because you just exchanged Nemesis for Tyrant. I'm sure the mechanics of how they did Tyrant in that one is probably going to be the same because it almost felt like three in Tyrant. I, you said you played a little bit. I don't know if you got to, you know, I got Tyrant to the, um, yeah, I got to that and I got to the um, car lot right before I guess you go to the sewers or whatever. And I was, I was down to like two bullets. I'd shot too many bullets. I didn't know that there was a dynamic difficulty where if I'm I'm sitting there purposely shooting everybody in the face and I think they made the game harder for me. I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. I Those, was like, this is rough. Them zo- the zombies in that they really were like sponge bullet. I mean, s- bullet sponges. They real like they took a lot of shots. And even when they would go down, if you left the area and came back, like they could still like you know get up sometimes like you know like way later like you'd be like oh well they must they're still on the ground after all this time surely they're dead and they still wouldn't be um you could easily throw all your ammo out just you know, you, you kind of like had to pick and choose like yeah. how much you wanted to spend on like one zombie uh but those things it's like they just eat bullets and they, you just keep going um i didn't board up the windows correctly I didn't even, I wasn't doing that right. And then um, yeah, I got stuck fighting things. And I thought, I was I was kind of thinking that I could be a, I was trying to conserve it, but I was like also being a little bit more aggressive. I'm like, there's no way this is going to be that hard. I'm like, no, no, it's it's like Resident oh, Evil yeah. 1 hard. Yeah, when you get into those areas where like the liquors were, and it's like, oh yeah, you can move them around them if you can creep around. But when Tyrant's walking down the hallway or you got 15 zombies staring at you, that's out the window. I mean, you know, you... And his thing was like, um, I was trying to remember if he showed up. Yeah, he showed up before that because that's when is, is the parking lot the part where you. Uh, it says Ada the dogs shows in the up. kennels. He he was there. He was running yeah. around. And then that's the thing. It's like you know, it's kind of like you could hear him, and there'd be certain rooms that were safe, kind of like Nemesis and Three. And that's why I was like, I'm sure the dynamic's going to be the same. He, like you'll probably be able to hear him stomping around the police station or whatever, you know. And, whatever but um i'm sure it's like they just won't have to change much uh that rocket launcher could get probably pretty annoying if he's got that in the remake which i'm sure he will i just I don't remember, remember him using it that much um in the original i just remember him scared the crap out of me in the original because like you'd step into a room and all of a sudden he'd come running up to smack you and you'd be like oh crap trying to turn around with those tank controls as fast as you could <laughs> to open the door back up I mean, it's just like, you just never do. At least this way, it'd be like, because I think sometimes in 3, it was just random. Like, it would be like, you, you, at least with Tyrant and Remake 2, you could, like, you could hear the footsteps. You kind of knew about where he was at. Like, you you knew, like, oh, he's going to be, you know, down this hallway to the right or something. You, you know he's going to be somewhere. Um, I think Nemesis in the original 3 was like, you open up a door, he might be, there's like a 50-50 chance he'd be there and he won't. I mean, it's just, yeah. you, you didn't know. And course you didn't have that great of evasive controls in the original either so i i imagine the remake will have you know it'll be a lot easier jill, but at the same jill time was pretty, uh, yeah jill was pretty strong compared uh, if you compare like the, um all the way up to code veronica jill was the strongest character out of them resident Evil three jill because she had that dodge thing i don't know if you remember yeah that. 
She uh-huh. had the dot. That was in fact. I think that was when they first, because two was where it had the knife, and I think three was where it had the dodge, um, because it was like you could dodge while reloading. I think sometimes, like if the dogs are chasing you or whatever. Yeah. Um, I tell you what's hard though is another game I, I downloaded for the Switch, which is weird. I downloaded for about the nine millionth time Resident Evil Four, and I went back and played it on the Switch, and it is so much better on the Switch than it is the Xbox One because I didn't run out of ammo all the time. Because um, on the One, it seemed like it, every they all they they it went sixty frames a second, so everybody moved a little bit faster, which you don't really realize until you start having. If I, as many times as I played that game, I I know my timing as far as like how many yeah. shots I can do before I need to do something, and you'd be like, oh crap, they're on me all of a sudden, and then you're just like, you'd be going to look for ammo, and it's like I never ever had to you know scrounge for ammo in any of those versions except for that one version of it, um, and in the Switch I didn't have that problem either, so I'm like, I wonder well, they if they fixed just, it. They I don't know if they fixed it, but it. Uh, it still got a few glitches in it that the other one had, you know, back in the day. Um, the aiming glitch when you shoot an explosive and the aiming thing just goes wonky on its own and starts bobbing up and down for no reason. Uh, stuff like that. But um, and, and I don't even know if it runs in 60 frames a second either. They definitely didn't have the upscaled cutscenes like they had. in. It, it, it kind of made me remind me of the port of the 360 version of it as opposed to the uh, the yeah. Xbox One version. Uh, but going back and playing those games, it feels weird when you're used to playing like Revelations or Remake or uh, even Six, where you can move and aim at the same time. It feels really weird to go back where you have to stand still, um, like in Five. Um, so it'd be cool if they'd remake those, but they wouldn't even have to do anything. Just you know, add moving controls. But I don't see them doing that anytime soon. They're, I mean, they did those definitive versions. They should have just at least on the Xbox. Backwards compatible it up. You would have to remaster it on the um, maybe an option, you know, but backwards compatible. Then just re- release it on PS4 and Xbox One again. But I mean, the way it seems to me with those kind of bugs or whatever is that the PC version is probably just the best to go. And um, you know, I, I played years and years of Resident Evil Five, and I just don't want to switch back to you know another version of the start over again. Um, oh yeah. It's like it's kind of like four. It's like I've been through it so many times. There's like a handful of games. Link's Awakening is one of them. Like on the the you know old Game Boy, about once a year, maybe every you know year and a half, I'll sit down and go back through it. Same with Resident Evil Four. I'll end up going back through it because I I liked it so much. But every time on Resident Evil Four, it's like, oh yeah, I have to stand here while I shoot, you know. But it's still way better than you know the old Resident Evil Three and Two and One, where you're just you know those. Those are extremely hard to go back and play. Oh, I can do um, it, man. No problem. Oh, I, yeah. But, and, um, and you're talking about 7. 7 was like the first time. I, I think that's the first one of the main series that I didn't play and beat. I just, for some reason, could not get interested in it. I bought you it. You play it? I played it. I started it, and I didn't play very much of it. I bought it. Play. It was like one of those things. Like I got it on a Black Friday for like 20 bucks one year. And I remember playing it for like... I, I mean, I probably put like 30 or 40 minutes into it, put it down, never went back to it. Um, I just, I, I didn't really care for the first person controls. I didn't care for whatever story they were. Tra- it seemed like they were just, I don't know. It just, they tried it, to get as far away from like the canon and lore as they could and, and then go to the change, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre route, um, which is fine to a point, but we've, learned to live and loved all these characters and you know so the first thing as a resident evil fan well why didn't they just put rebecca in there they haven't used rebecca in a while as uh, opposed yeah. to yeah you know, oh i don't even remember the guy's name was it jake or jack or something i can't even remember i just as like it was so kind of forgettable and uh, i remember i started it and was just like i just can't get into it i just you know and it's like and i, I could adjust it to the first person part that didn't really bother me it was just like it was almost like you're it says resident evil but it doesn't feel like resident evil it was yeah. just totally different i mean it was like at that point evil within felt more like resident evil than that that game did you know what i get your vibe there too um it it 
the the puzzles were there. The survivor horror was there. The the hiding from the big daddy in the uh, main part of the house that was new. But you know that's become from Outlast and Alien Isolation. They had they pretty much had to address that. But I, to me, when you take a guy and you purposely make it for like an insert for the player and you make him like with no personality at all, um, I, I didn't. That is not Resident Evil to me. And so even I, I don't know if you got far enough. They actually tried to show. They showed his face, but they covered it up or something. And so you would never actually see the guy's face. And it's like, these characters are essentially heroes. They're kind of like, two, you know, Laura Croft. They're heroes. And um, and I think that hurts this longevity. And then I have asked Eddie today, he's like, you know, uh, you know, you could just steam share my copy of Resident Evil 7 and play it. And he's, he just said he didn't want to. He says, that's not what Resident Evil is. And I, I, I agree. Um Maybe when they do Resident Evil 8, they could still do a first-person mode, but I don't think they will. I don't. I think they're uh, now afraid to do it. Yeah, especially after how well like Remake 2 did. Like I said, almost got Game of the Year, and Remake 3, it's like unless they just totally botch that up, like it doesn't. It doesn't seem like it's, they're not having to do it from the ground up. It seems like it wouldn't yeah. be hard, and you know. They didn't really do a whole lot of downloadable content for two. Like, I mean, it wasn't like, oh, we're going to like nickel and dime you after you buy this game. It was like there was a little bit, but most of it you could get if you bought the deluxe version, which I think was like $10 extra at the time. It wasn't very much. It wasn't like, you know, buy this $130 copy and you get, you know, these skins with it or whatever. Um, it seemed, I think, I think they it seemed like they from... cared a little bit. You know what I mean? Maybe as opposed to uh, the Street Fighter, you know, snafu of like you know <laughs> pay all this money for these fighters for this game that's not even 20 percent done yet you know when it comes out i mean it's just that it just seemed like they didn't you know of course they got their special editions that'll come out you know but uh, or you statue know. shit i think there's a hundred something for resident evil 3 it's already sold out with gamestop some kind of statue um, I, I think two had one that was like it came with like a USB typewriter keyboard or something. And it's like, you know, and sometimes collector's editions I have some kind of nifty looking cool stuff in it. Kind of like I think one of the the Dark Knight Batman ones, one of the Batman ones had like a battering thing. It was cool, you know, to set on a shelf. I didn't get it, but it, at least it looked neat. Some of this is like you get this statue or, or you know, a satchel and a book. And it's just like I can live without that. You know, it's like just give me the game, you know. Yeah, all the fallout shit. Yeah, exactly. I think they, I think they learned their lesson a little bit when how good Monster Hunter World just came out and it was just the game. I was saying that Jason told me they're not going to do any DLC for it. I'm like, you're out of your mind. They ended up doing stuff. It was little stuff, and then, um, but the the whole game was like 60 hours right from the get go, and it sold a bazillion jillion copies. And I think that's where they learned. You know what? We can't fucking just beat their ass right from the get go. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I've got hopes for Resident Evil Three as well. Oh yeah, it, I, I love the second one. It was fun. I played through it like multiple times on the scenarios. Um, they didn't have the scenario stuff in three originally. I wonder if they'll add it in with that with like what was his name, Carlos or whatever his name is. They uh, had the multiple routes based on how you dealt with Nemesis in like yeah. certain situations. I wonder if they'll even have that in there. I don't know. I mean, well, I mean, uh, you know, I I guess you could be like, I mean, you know, you had the option in two of like, do I fight him or run? I mean, you because you could always attack him and he would kind of go down and it would, you know, slow him down for a minute. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I guess you could do the same thing with Nemesis. I just I knew it. I remember in you know three originally it just made a difference on where you're going on the map. Um, you know, kind of backtracking around but um it just makes me wonder if like with carlos they'll throw in like you know some scenario where you know play as him and see what he was doing in the background the whole time um, yeah and i'm hoping that they don't have those um the puzzles i don't know if you you gotta think real far back but i played resident with her about five or six years ago the puzzles God, it's been um, like 20 for me yeah the puzzles are a little bit more clicky a bunch of switchies and and, and a little bit to more to annoy your ass than um the other ones were so hopefully that's a big thing they look into yeah i seem to remember that because there were some that were i mean the last time i played it i mean it was it, it had to be pre-playstation 2 i mean it had to be like right around 98 99 somewhere around there um because I remember playing it. I don't know if I ever played 
played it. I might have played it on GameCube. I remember they remade it. For game, you know, yeah, well, that's they the one I got. Scaled it. I might have played through it on GameCube. That might be the last time I played it. But I remember I know, some of those puzzles. Yeah. Um, two I know you had a Dreamcast. That, it might have been. I remember. I remember going back through one of them on on one of those consoles, and it was about that time. Uh, but the puzzles in two, none of them were like over the top, like ridiculous. They were, you know, not like some of them can be. I, like Code Veronica had some that were kind of, you know, uh, th- there was a little bit, you know, this is this is insane, you know, type things. <laughs> You're just like, it's like I could spend an hour here trying to go back and forth measuring <laughs> these liquids out in this thing to spin them around. And, you know, you're just like, oh, my God. You don't even remember where you're going after you get done. You're just like, what was I doing again? Yeah, I got to backtrack to a storage box. But um, 2 didn't have anything. Like, they had a lot of, the, you know, it's like they used some of the puzzles from the original, but, like, you know, just kind of nothing over the top insane like some of them. Yeah. I when I remember how I first got Resident Evil Three. Um, I'd just gotten my wisdom teeth removed, and and my mom had gotten home, and then I was like not feeling good. I puked up my own blood, and then I puked it up like all over the walls, and it was like black looking goo stuff because it had been in my stomach. And then I'm sitting there miserable as hell. My mom's cleaning up my own puke, and I'm just like, I, I really want Resident Evil 3. It just came out. <laughs> she went and got it for me, man. Use the sympathy play, man. You just got to puke on the walls, get your game. Um, I was working on Resident Evil 1 at the time, and I dropped it. And so I played 3 instead, and I had to go back years later. I, be- I beat Remake 1 before I beat uh, the original one. I'm about to say, I wonder if they'll have an easy mode on the, the Remake of 3, because if you remember on 3, it had like a... There was like an easy mode that gave you like you, a ton of shotgun. Dude, I mean, he was shotgun a super shells. badass. It was like, <laughs> oh my god! Like you know, you you used to play in one and two where you're like you're having to conserve your ammo. You play that mode and you're just like you could pretty much go the entire game without having to worry about ammo ever. I mean, <laughs> it was just. I mean, I I, I thought it was kind of neat to go back and play like that. Um, after I played it the first time, I was like, oh, I'm gonna go back and try that, and it was like. It's like super easy, you know, but it was neat because you didn't feel like you were, you know, it took away all that the anxiety of like, do I, do I need to really shoot this dog or can I outrun <laughs> it? You know? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, let's wrap this up, man. I think this has turned out pretty good. It provided the shit recorded, right? Um, but uh, I guess we'll do another one. We'll have to come up with a good topic. Maybe we'll talk about the older Resident Evils or Diablo or some shit like that. Um, yeah, there's more. There's there's those things coming out. Diablo, whatever they, you know, called it. 20, I forget. 2025. Yeah, in 2025, it'll be here. I mean, you know, that's kind of one thing I was surprised about Remake. Uh, it comes out like, what, March, April? April I mean, 3rd's when it come out. It surprised right. me. Yeah, because I was like, that's like you know three four months from now it's like really quick i mean you know it's cool but it's great it's just I, I i'm used to I, seeing trailers you know things and it'd be like well I'll, I, I, that'll be cool in three years you know yeah. i'm gonna um run through two again before i get well i will run through it correctly and actually win this time <laughs> and then i'll do three but uh jason remember april 3rd okay super collector's edition all right pre-order it jason you got me all right 